Kirk, you've flown many Mustangs through the years. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen you do some really neat stuff with them, and I've seen you take a couple of them into the ground pretty fast fact, and hard. Yeah. yeah. That was a Mustang. Yes, it was. Yeah. It was the neatest thing, too. Inverted, In, you know, inf pulled up, and one wing met the other one, and they clapped hands, and that was the end of it. That's from... <laughs> Well, you experiment with putting one. brushless power in something in, that in had a, a gear, just didn't, yeah, power plant. Yeah. And, yeah, it was the early days of yeah. electric, man. It was, you yeah, know, it, it was fun. It, it was, was fun. that stress. I enjoyed that the stressed search. airframe. The yeah. Stress, the, yeah, I enjoyed the search skin. party that we had. It took forever to find. Yeah, it was it. in the corn, wasn't it? it was a bean, bean fields. Beans. Bean field. Ooh, yeah, not good times. Fun. Good times. Well, this one obviously came back in one piece. You had a good time with it. I know you've been ranting and raving about how its flight characteristics. You've really enjoyed it. So I, I've grown to not expect much from this class or size. Of Warbird, yeah. and I, you know that's, that sounds horrible. It's like I'm no, you know, you're, traditionally they haven't to been say a they're good all size. garbage. No, yeah. I, I'm not like that. I mean, I, I'm, my mind's wide open, so I, I just I didn't have a real high level of expectation. Usually, Warbirds don't kind of come into their own or really start performing well until they get up into the 40 plus range. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. And that's when you start having a lot of fun with them. Exactly. Like, yeah, when you see one fun. come in this size, this size in general for anything. With, that is to say without any kind of electronic stabilization, too. Exactly. You can play around these tiny yes. or smaller sizes, much smaller than this, with electronic stabilization on yep. board and all that. This is just a raw airframe with yeah. power plant and control services. Well, so. this, this size airframe usually gets itself caught in this bastard situation where it needs more power than what the, the, than the, what the plane can handle weight-wise mm -hmm. to put in it to make it fly. And as soon as you kill the power, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. Well. Exactly. It falls down like a brick. They but tend to get high, you're heavy, gonna, too. You're going to change that for us. I didn't change it. I'm just going to report the facts. That's what I'm saying. Just you're going to change fact. that misnomer. Sure. That, uh, that, yeah, whatever. That misconception. Model characteristics, build as advertised. You gave it a 5 out of 5. Yeah, it went right together. We have the build clinic on it. You can see it's very predictable and straightforward. All right, you don't need to say no any more. No surprises. You, you convinced me. Okay. <laughs> Next, finish 4.5 out of 5. It's beautiful. It's a sharp, very sharp it's plane. Beautiful. I was so happy when I saw this color scheme, too, because yeah. I'm just so tired of seeing that green scheme. You the know, green Mustang. The yeah. green Mustang, yeah. Well, you've got the red tail Mustang, the green Mustang, and then, yep. you know, this, this came together nicely. Sometimes they look a little oddball when they put, you know, different color combinations yeah. on them, too, and uh, this looks good. It's yeah. a track now, plane. Panel line details, yep. you know, rivets around the major It's a nice areas. looking plane. It, it really is. It. it has a nice finish, too. Yep. Power, five out of five. You know, I, the, the first thing I was happy with is as soon as I took off, um, just feeling the power. And I had I took off initially four-blade prop, first flying session with it was four-blade only. And, um, it, you know, four-blades, when you take a power plant, you say, okay, here's the two-blade, you know, prop for it. Here's the right setup for it. Here's the four-blade. We know we reduce diameter. We yep. know we increase pitch when we go to a multi-bladed prop yep. or three-blade or four-blade versus a two-blade. Um, we also know we lose speed and we lose some thrust. Yep. So we don't get everything out of our power plant when yeah. we go to a, a, a four blade um, so or a three blade. It was great. I mean, I say great. It had plenty of climb out of 40. If you want to do scale stuff with a Warbird, now if you want to do, you know, modern, you know, over the top, unlimited vertical climb out yeah. stuff that they can do with an actual scale P-51D Mustang, um, you know, no, you're not going to get that, but it's, it's more than enough. Yeah. You can do, you know, your your uh, nose overs, you can do, uh, you know, every every aerobatic that you can pull off with this, you know, with this with the real aircraft, you can easily pull off with this scaled down RC version. Yeah. Um, so the four blade was a lot of fun. Put the two blade on there, and of course you get just that much more. Sure. But the four blade already meets all expectations. Yeah. It's already on that cusp of being at or above all yeah. expectations. So the two blade is, it's not even really worth discussing. You just got, you just have more. Yeah. You have a little more yeah. speed and you have a little more thrust. Okay, great, but I can do everything I need to do with the four blade. If you want to belly land it and treat it like that, put the two blade on. If you want to really suck the nectar out of the scale experience and fly it off the ground with yeah. landing gear on with the four blade, which I have a tendency to do, I'm gonna leave the four blade on it nonstop. Sure. It's just because it's great. Oh, everything yeah. I need. Yep. Yep. Ground handling, 4.5 out of 5. Handles extremely well, surprisingly well. Um, three to five mile an hour winds when we flew this uh, plane as well as some yep. others we tested on the same day. Um, had authority all the way down to the last to the last. Well, you've got some wheel. large ailerons there to work with, which helps. Very large ailerons, yeah. definitely not scale ailerons. No, um, but you wouldn't want them scale. <laughs> no, and uh, they stay enough near the prop wash to where you know you can blip the throttle and still yeah. get a little more authority than you do from the prevailing wind. So uh, it handled great all the way down the ground. Now. This the tail is typical Mustang elevators way up in the thrust in the upper right and thrust line, yep. and uh, the tail gets light on you immediately, and you don't have enough mass there, 
we were on our beautiful pristine field. They haven't rolled it yet because we're we're early in the season. It's actually before the normal flying season. We just had some crazy warm days in the middle of all this chaos. Um, they haven't rolled it out yet, so it's just that little bit of frost bubble, mm -hmm. you know, where you have a little bit of little lumps of dirt coming yeah. out of stuff. And even that, which you know, in a plane with an inch and a half, you know, or, or two inch main uh, main landing gear wheels would be able to handle with maybe a little bit more weight. This thing wanted to go right up on its nose very yeah. easily. So you could do it, hold full up elevator, you know, blip the throttle a few times. If we had the ready for receiver version of this and I had the ability to throw into high rates and yeah. really get full deflection on yeah. that elevator, different yeah. story. I probably could have taxied a lot easier. Yeah. But with <clears> the stock radio using with, you know, the horns all the way out, um, uh, I didn't have enough authority to be able to really. Well, you know, Mustangs traditionally have very small elevator surface anyhow. Yeah, and, yeah. And you know, they didn't, they didn't change very much Heavily from deviate that. from that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you now, as far as rudder authority on the ground, it's great, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, if you're bumpy runway, you know, bumpy landing surface, you're going to fight a little bit. Sure. Really, you know, that's just us working in those current conditions. Otherwise, it has good ground handling overall. So. All right. Durability, four point five out of five. You know, we know we nosed it down, snapped our four blade prop off of there because we were. Trying you to get, always break your toys. Trying to get greedy on the taxi, like oh, I don't want to walk all the way out there and get it. Like, taxi it back, you know. It's like I, I don't know what thought process goes yeah. through your head, but you make that decision on the spot. Yeah, I'm going to try to taxi it back, even though I know I've already had you problems. You get mud on your flip flops. So. So. <laughs> I was actually, you knew. <laughs> I know. Hey, it was warm, man. I had to. If you buy Walmart flip flops for those days, you wouldn't worry about it, would you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's right. what I get for those designer flip flops. There you um, go. Is there but, such a uh, thing? We did break it off, and the thing that you're going to know, yeah, I'm sure there is. Uh, you're going to notice how how durable and how tough that engine mount is. Yeah. It is rock solid in there. So they did a great job of what feels like physically they overbuilt the nose, um, yeah. you know, on it, but. In reality, it's not. It's just very durable, so yeah. it's tough. It cart, you know, it did a it did a slight cartwheel when it went over, and um, no wingtip damage whatsoever. Snapped the prop. Spinner didn't even. Looks like the face it. of that pilot might have hit the dashboard. He had a little mark on his forehead. Yeah, <laughs> just looking at it. Next, Whew. pilot experience flight is advertised five out of five. We've talked a lot yeah. about that already. You're gonna you love just, it. You're gonna love the tail authority. The the you know, the knife edge authority. Everything you like about a Mustang, you're gonna like about yeah. it. You know, you're gonna see it, you're gonna, you're gonna experience that in, in the uh, Mustang 350, and it's gonna be there and you're gonna be happy. It's, it's really a yeah. fun flyer all around. Good. 4.5 out of five on flight time. Yeah, it was good. I mean, kind of what you'd expect in this size, you're, you're dealing with a 600 milliamp 3S LiPo, so you don't have a ton of no. capacity there. Um, and uh, you know you get a good comfortable five minute flight out of it. Could you get a bigger battery to put in? You think you could not fit? without modifying it? You'd have to modify it because the depth of the battery. The battery actually fits vertically oh. up into the uh, up into the fuselage, and of course it gives you a perfect balance at that point with the six hundred yeah. milliamp three S. So um, ba bearing that all the way into the receiver pocket, you know that that receiver for the battery, mm -hmm. not the radio receiver. Yeah, uh, you've got just enough room to get your wires down in and, and close the hatch yeah. cover. So you'd have to make a modification to get a bigger battery in there. Could the airframe handle it? I'm sure you could probably go to a you know eight hundred milliamp or something like that. Because I know that, some or, of the 800s are pretty short. Mm -hmm. you know? yep. You may so. be able to fit, if you can physically fit it in there, I, I, based on the amount of authority I had in the tail and how yeah. it behaved, you'd want to verify the CG on the ground yeah, before you true. did it. But it felt, you know, in the air, it felt like it could definitely handle, you know, a couple more well, ounces yeah. in the nose without going, or, you know, a good ounce in the nose, sure. you know, an ounce and a half, two ounces without going crazy on you. You'd have to verify it, but I bet you could. If this was your this was your baby, if you fell in love with, if this was your obsession. <laughs> oh, but um um and you really wanted to just take it further than where it's at, you may be able to play around with that, with the battery capacity. All right. Field size, large park. Absolutely. This is a this is a classic park flyer. If the park allows it. So yeah. don't ever make the assumption that no. every park is comfortable with you flying arts no. and stuff there. Don't and you don't want to find out by getting in, in trouble. No. Nope. And you say, well, I don't care. I don't care if they yell at me, I'll just leave. No. That can create problems down the road. Yes, it can. Don't be a I'll say don't be a jerk. You know, yeah, we have jerks in the industry, unfortunately, and I, I know some of those jerks love flying with them, but they're still jerks. They yep. make bad decisions over and over again, and they don't see the big deal because they're like, eh, hey, it's water yeah. on the bridge. I don't care, but they cause problems for the rest of us. Well, yeah. We want to get parks open. Mm -hmm. We want to have some new, you know, options and flexibility. Yep. They set that public perception that, yeah. you know, we're all these self-centered people we've found in public in, kids in public places our people are fascinated to watch planes absolutely fly. oh and if general, you're polite about it yep. if you're 
if you're uh, respectful, safe, respectful, and safe, all that, people are going to enjoy sitting and watching yep. you fly. I've done it myself. In you know, I've got a neighborhood that I fly in occasionally. That all the utilities are underground and they're set back from the road. It's a beautiful landing strip. Every one of those neighbors in there look forward to me coming and flying because they love to watch. Yeah. It's also because I'm very safe, mm -hmm. you know. But all and it would know take. Where you live. Well, <laughs> yeah. But you know, all it would yeah. take is for one stupid. Oh, one you know, bad judgment, and you and, lose control and you lose in your house, yeah. and all of a sudden you get a problem. Exactly. So, so if people would, if guys would just calm down instead of going out there with the mindset, I want to fly my plane, and I don't care what anybody thinks. And this is my right. It's just my right. No, yeah, it's not it's your not right. Your right. No. It's a, it's a, a courtesy. Yeah, because if I went and spit on your shoes in public, that wouldn't be my right, would it? What's well, the difference between that and running a plane in your, your attitude, car? Depends on your attitude, but I'd, you'd probably get a little, you know, negative reception. <laughs> Not from you. Portability, 4.5 4. 4. out of 5, portability. It's been a hard winter Portability, for you, far, oh, man. It's been a tough long winter. It's been bouncing off the walls. Yep. My, uh, yeah. You need to get you up in the air. You um, need to get me out. Portability. <laughs> 4.5 4. out of 5. I um, said that twice. I know. Yeah. yeah. Out. Um, yeah, it's it's very portable from the, just do, from the size. You're not going to remove the wing in all practicality. Um, but it's, you know, it's size alone makes it a pretty portable yeah. plane to deal with. Very easily fits behind just about any seat on any car, even if you got a little Prius or something like that. Or a, you can probably put this in the back of a smart car, no problem, without crushing it. So I don't own one. Nor do I. Nor but do they I. look tiny. They do look tiny. Skill level. I think cute's the right word. <laughs> Intermediate is the skill level. Yeah, it's four-channel plane. It's, it's a, a Mustang. Warbird. It's a low-wing aircraft. This guy yeah. has several attributes that make it an intermediate flyer. Yeah. Don't use this as your trainer. Even though there is a trainer, wasn't there a trainer Mustang there out there? Are, there, is, there are trainer but Mustangs. They have like they droops look, and yeah. they have and they kind semi permanent of, flaps and they have all this stuff going they on. They have a shell on the outside that looks like a Mustang. Yeah, it looks like yeah. a Mustang. Yeah, yeah, this is not a trainer by any means. I mean, means. by any sense of the word Mustang, they look kind of like one, but their airfoils different, everything. So, yep. Yeah. All right, well, that wraps up our review of Aries RC's PPD-1D Mustang 350 RTF. Um, as a reminder, we do have that assembly clinic, so if you want to find out more of the under-the-hood stuff, you can check that out at our website, as well as the full review at 2bfly.com. For our mobile users, you can go to rcflightsource.com, download our mobile app, and take our content with you on the go. I'm Kurt with Two Brothers Hobby. And I'm Rob. Thanks for watching.